Good morning. Welcome to Mission City. We're just going to go ahead and have you stand with us if you don't mind. We're just going to sing some songs together and just celebrate our Lord.
the church today. Um, I've just been uh, praying over us as a church today just to be able to come towards worship just with a heart that's just prepared. Um, and what that means is, is different for, for each individual, but you may need to just go before the Lord and, and lay some things down at his feet. Say, God, today, uh, this distraction is yours. My heart is yours today so that I can sing this song from a place of affection and not from a place that is um, torn in, in two, two different directions, God, but you have my attention today. You have my heart. So with that heart, with that mind, let's sing this song again.
God who is altogether in every way lovely and worthy of our worship. May our hearts, God, just get there, God, to that place where we can surrender ourselves, God, and just be here with you today, that we can hear your voice clearly and receive it. In your name, amen. You can have a seat. Thank you. Mission City, how are we today? Glad some of you are, thank you, Polly. Uh, uh, glad you guys are doing well. Uh, well, we're super, super glad you're here today. My name is Russell, I'm the lead pastor here. We are a community that makes Jesus known. Uh, throughout the past several weeks, we've been hearing from different ministry leads uh, at Mission City to tell you a little bit about their ministry, but also to invite you to serve with them. And so I'm going to invite up Katie. She is our kids director. Give it up for Katie, everybody. A lot of the most support so far for Katie. She's going to tell you a little bit more about serving your kids. Okay. Hi, guys. My name is Katie, like you said. Um, I'm the kids director here. Okay. Uh, by a show of hands, how many of you have ever been in kids' church as a kid or volunteered? Okay. I think a lot of you. Great. Um, so I'm just super passionate about kids knowing Jesus as early as possible. And I think it really can make um, a difference in their lives. Uh, I've been doing this for over a year now, or almost a year, I guess, and just so you know, um, to give you an idea of what happens in a kid's room, we have tripled in size in that year, <laughs> so God is doing some pretty crazy things over there, like really awesome things, um, but because of that, we've experienced some growing pains, so we are really in need of some more volunteers, so we have a little video, we're going to let you meet some of the kids, and they're going to tell you why you should volunteer. I like it because it's very fun and it's educational. Um, I like how we create stuff and I like how we get to watch videos and read Bible. That we get to play with toys and stuff and you make it fun. Thank you. 
typically split the kids up into like newborn to four and then the elementary size. Um, so yeah, if you like bigger kids, the lesson's all ready for you. You just have to um, go through it. There's not a lot of prep work. And then on the little kids side, it's mostly just playing and loving on them so parents can enjoy the service. And I know it's kind of a bummer because you miss church, but I would just challenge you to view it as a different kind of church and you'd be surprised how the kids could bless you also. Um, yeah, we are kind of need like five volunteers to be comfortable. So if you're interested, I'll be out there after. If you have more questions or whatever, happy to talk to you. And then lastly, we have our next kids event coming up. It's a trunk or treat on October 30th. It'll be from three to five at Broadway Park. Um, so there's a sign up at the connections table. If you wanna show up with your card, to have it decorated and everything great. If not, if you don't feel creative, but you wanna participate, we can like pair you with someone that's interested in decorating. So um, yeah, just let us know. Sweet, yeah. Uh, when Maisie said that she loves that God created uniforms, what she meant was that God is creator. Of course you guys knew that, right? <laughs> What does your kids like to eat? Bacon. Why don't you like pre, uh, kids' church? Because of Jolly Ranchers. Awesome. <laughs> That's my kid. <laughs> well, pray for us. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, if you are interested and maybe you have to jet after service, uh, you can also put, put on the connect card as well. So on the screen right now, there is a QR code, and uh, that QR code will take you to our website. Uh, and our website, you can click on the menu and click connect card. Uh, if you come to Mission City, you hear this every week, we encourage you to fill it out. It helps us just kind of know that you're here. Uh, or if you want to share prayer requests, if you want to share that you want to volunteer in kids or, or one of the other ministries that was mentioned in the previous weeks, uh, or maybe you have questions about the church, you can do that as well. So, uh, or if this is your first time and you just wanted to let us know that you were here, uh, we will just say thanks for coming. Uh, we, won't, we won't hassle you, I promise. Uh, but you can click check that box as well. So you can do that. And then also on our website, you can give at uh, missioncitykc.com slash give or click on the give button. We'll take you to our giving link. So cool. All right. I think that is uh, all the announcements. So I'm going to transition into our series. So last few weeks, we've been in a community series. This week, we're starting a new series uh, on our vision. But before we do go into that, I do have some big news for our church. Nothing to get nervous about. It's okay. Uh, we're about to be two years old, uh, so we, our birthday is technically 10-4-2020, so the weekend we'll celebrate that will be October 2nd, uh, that's in two weeks, uh, and so if you are here, we'll do something small, but we we're going to have something crazy, anything like that, but just something small to celebrate, acknowledging the fact that the Lord has allowed us to exist for two years to minister to this community, which is really cool, uh, but uh, we all, in, in that, uh, we have met the entire two years here, uh, and the big news is that we are going to move. Uh, some of you might have already know this. Uh, some of you don't. doesn't need to be too shocking. We're not moving too far away. Uh, the theater is starting to put in reclining seats into these auditoriums. Uh, and what is happening is actually, see what happened was, um, now the other side of the theaters are being remodeled, I think currently, or they're waiting on permits. Uh, and then so by December, these theaters will be very difficult to meet in. And so essentially they have to have a, um, a handicap uh, access for uh, like a wheelchair chair ramp all the way to the front. And that is going to basically create a wall that runs from about where the end of that wall is on the front side of the stage to where, where I'm about. And so unless we wanna all have service over here, you can all tilt your heads, that could be fun. Uh, uh, we, we thought it might be best uh, to look for some other environments. And so uh, we are going to move, uh, unless he's already put this up here, the, to uh, right across the street to the Merriam Community Center. So, uh, which is right there, you see that picture of that. Uh, the Merriam Community Center actually opened in 2020 and it has room available to rent uh, and uh, it's beautiful. If you've never been there, you should just, you can go anytime they're open. You can say, hey, I'm a part of Mission City Church. I just wanted to see kind of the space. And they had these room, they have three uh, kind of conference rooms. Two of them we're gonna use for our adult service to start with. And then one right next door will be for our kids room. 
that we are going to we're going to rent. And so we are going to move uh, in November. The first week of November, we're going to start meeting over there. There won't be any break in our service. <coughs> Last Sunday in October, we'll celebrate. We'll thank uh, Cinemark for their service, specifically Renee, who's not here today. But if you've ever met Renee, she's awesome. She's been amazing for us over the last two years. And uh, I haven't told her yet because she's out of town. But um, but we'll celebrate them and thank them, and then we'll get jumped right in. Uh, I'll show you a couple pictures. Go back to the other one, too. So uh, it's, I know it's kind of dark in here, so I apologize. So there's a beautiful courtyard for us to hang out that we can access after service, and it's not a big deal. And then the, the building, in the sh uh, you see the front entrance where those people are walking towards. The left side is kind of like all of their aquatic stuff and some gyms, but to the right is where all those conference rooms are. And so just so you know, and we'll talk more about it, we'll announce this every single week. You'll get tired of me, you'll know that we're moving, we'll probably ask for help and things like that in some ways. Uh, but yeah, so it's great. We'll still meet currently at 10 a.m. is kind of how it's, it's docked for, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Uh, last one is, this is actually what the rooms look like, all three of them open. No, we're not having a wedding banquet. Uh, <laughs> Although that does sound fun, uh, but it does it does give us some access to to this. So instead of having three of those screens, we'll close one of those walls, and it'll be set a little bit more conference style. Uh, I will say the chairs are not as comfortable. I apologize, because <laughs> there's nothing there's not a church in America that has a better seat than what you're sitting in right now. Uh, I'm just uh, yeah, so bummer for that. But good news is it won't be pitch black dark the whole time, and I'll be able to see some people, so which is nice. Although that might be a hindrance for you who wanted to avoid being seen in church. So maybe this is the end for us, and it's been a good time. It's been a good run. <laughs> Thanks for coming. So uh, if you do have questions, uh, I'll be in the lobby after service. We'd love to talk to you if you want to know, like, all the dis details, for all price, stuff like that, too. It's essentially, a, it's like, it's essentially space-wise, cost-wise, it's almost identical, like, just to everything of what we currently do. It's still load in, load out, um, except it's in a facility that's almost brand new so and it's beautiful if you've ever been there people will uh will tell you all about it so cool all right i was about to be a teacher and be like any questions but then that would just ruin my sermon so we're not going to do that <laughs> so uh so we are kicking off a series in our vision and i do want to tell you uh kind of what we're doing over the next three weeks just going to be three weeks not very long then we'll we, we typically if you're here we typically teach through books of the bible and occasionally we'll have like spiritual practices or occasional themes or things we're talking about in our church. So we'll jump back in to the life of Abraham um, in the fall, like in about three or four weeks. So this week, I'm going to do an, a quick overview, and it, and it will feel quick um, because we had the announcement of the, the new building. It took that took a little bit of time of our vision and values. And the reason why we're doing this, when we first opened in October 2020, we did a six week series on our vision, actually seven week series on our vision and our values one sermon for every value, and that's great, and if you really want to listen to it, you can go back and listen to it, but this is a very quick hitter version of who we are as a church, and as I look around, and believe it or not, I can see with the lights on, uh, there's a lot of new faces, and you may or may not know kind of who we are in our DNA as a church, and so I wanted to go over that with you, and we will from time to time do that, because we want you to know what we're about, and we want you to be about that too, because we are... Mission City. Uh, the second week, next week, is um, is a great opportunity. We're going to have some missionaries that we partner with uh, that from Brazil. They part, they do ministry in the Amazon. Uh, Nate and Roxana Miller. Uh, Nate is going to preach next week, kind of share kind of what's going on in the Amazon, uh, and also just kind of just just preach for the week as well. And you'll get to meet them as well. But just to hear kind of some of their our first global partners. Uh, we're looking for more. We're, we're talking to people in Paris. Uh, the guy preached in early, maybe May, before they went back home. And uh, But again, I want you to get a sense of, like, we, yes, we care about Kansas City, but we also care about the global church. And to show you that, we need to put people that are reaching and serving in different parts of the, the world for you to see them. So hopefully you get a heart for the global church as well. And also, they're just happy to be in town right now, so it just works out perfectly. Uh, so you'll get to see them next week. And then finally, in our birthday, uh, we're going to have a big fat cake. We're not. Maybe we will. I don't know. I'll have to ask Melissa for permission. Uh, or whatever she wants to do. Uh, but we're going to have something uh, to celebrate. And then we're going to talk about where we're going. Uh, not just mentioned, not just across the street, by the way. If you don't know where Mary Community Center is. I believe even if you took the light from this inner, like inside this shopping center, you would go to the community center. 
But not, we're, we're, yes, we're going across the street, but where is the Lord taking Mission City as we are maturing into our third year of ministry as well? So that's where we're going. So hopefully, um, uh, hopefully, over if you've been here for a while, you've learned what our vision statement is. Uh, if not, I would encourage you to try to memorize it, or at least don't roll your eyes every time I say it. But we are uh, a community that makes Jesus known. That's, that's what our vision is. That's, that's kind of the heart of, of what we are about. And what does that mean? Is, is One is that we want to know Jesus. Like We want every single one of you to know Jesus personally. Now we want to like so that you will have a you will participate in the community. But if you don't know him personally, then you're not connected in that. If you were here last week, in that fellowship, sharing in the things of Christ, that koinonia that we were talking about last week. Uh, but we want to know Jesus. Like we want to follow him. Like we want to do the things that. If you're a John Mark Comer fan, that's cool. I'm a big John Mark Comer fan, or at least I love these three lines. Like we want to be with Jesus. So that means like sometimes throughout our week, often we want to spend time with Jesus. And we want to become like him, like we want to be transformed uh, into his likeness. Uh, and then we don't just want to like philosophically become like him or, or just internally become like him, but we want our actions to be the same as Jesus. We want to do what Jesus did. So we want to be with Jesus, we want to become like Jesus, and we want to do what Jesus did. This is what it looks like to follow Jesus, or as John Mark Comer, because he's in Portland, so he's way cooler than I am, and they're, you know... Pacific Northwest, way cooler than, we're Midwesterners, people, okay? Like, we get, there's a hipness that we lack, okay? It's okay. And if that offends you, okay, go to the Northwest, it's fine, but don't really, stay with me. Um, but he says, practicing the, uh, practicing the way of Jesus. That just sounds so much cooler than follow Jesus. But what is he really saying? He's saying, follow Jesus. He's just saying, follow Jesus. So we want to do that. And then we want to proclaim Jesus. Like, there, there's, a, there's a part of us that, that really, like, not just a part of us, we really want, because we know Jesus and follow Jesus, and we believe that, that following him is the best way of life, and it's the way that we were created for, and that we want to proclaim that Jesus is King and Lord and Savior who died and rose again, so that we can have life and forgiveness in Christ, <laughs> and so that others would experience it as well. And if we don't, then what's going to happen is that the church will continue to decline, and we're going to continue to ask the question of, like, where were the good old days? And they're not there because we, we weren't faithful to proclaiming this good news that we believed on ourselves. And so we are a community that makes Jesus known. There's a picture of my journal looking at a fountain at Antioch Park. And this is where this, this was birthed, not, not like completely this vision. But I, I was fed up in the process of the church planning residency that I was a part of. And I, because we were so far along, it was... We, we were in lockdown still, but I could go to Antioch Park and walk around, which is nice. And it was April, I think, and I was mad because I was like, we're going to launch a church in like four months, five months. I don't even have a vision statement yet. And so I went, and I went, and I prayed, and I asked the Lord for just wisdom. And uh, this verse came to mind, 1 Corinthians 2. And this phrase, make Jesus known, came to my mind. This is the verse. It says, and I, and I, this is Paul talking, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming, to you, the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, and the longer you get to know me, you're going to learn these sermons don't have lofty speech or wisdom. I'm a plain spoken boy from Georgia, okay? But for I, but, but for I decided to know nothing among you except what? Jesus Christ and him crucified. That this, is, this message is enough, that this is what it's about. It's about making Jesus' name famous in this world and a group of people deciding to do it together. And so when you're a part of Mission City, this is what we're going for. And we, we desire to be a church that is, that, that is driven by the vision and values that our team and our collective have put together that we believe that God has orchestrated and given us language for. Meaning this, like this is what we want to be about. We want to be about a community, like a group of people, not alone making Jesus known. And then the way we kind of operate is through these values. And if it doesn't fit into this, that's okay. We bless it, but it might not be for us for this current season that we're in that we believe these are our values. So, so that's our vision. A community to what? To what? I don't believe you. <laughs> Let's just try it one more time. A community to what? Thank you. Were you cheering when the Chiefs came back, when, when, they, when they beat the Chargers? Is that how you said, go Chiefs? <laughs> no, you were not. Be happy, people. All right, so we'll try again, but another time. So, but, so in that, we have five values. The first value is be hospitable. You probably hear this uh, or have heard this uh, in our church. We have this on our, our website. It says this, 
We want to love our neighbors through the art of hospitality, serving one another at the core uh, was at the core of Jesus' teaching. He said we would show the world that we are his disciples by our love for one another. Because of this, it is critical for every person who walks through our doors to be honored and valued. And so we desire to show hospitality. Hopefully, if you are new to our community, that someone greeted you this morning. If they didn't, we apologize. We, we, we hope to be better next time or someone will catch you on the way out and will acknowledge you and honor you and be kind to you. Not only that, like we want to do that with our homes as well. Uh, Romans 12, 13 says this, contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. It's just this very simple command. Like, like this is actually talking about the body, but just showing hospitality to the community or to the body of believers. And we want to do that, and we want to do that to our neighbors and to everyone else as, as well. And so last week I talked about this idea of, of we want to be hospitable and we want to receive hospitality as well. And I think, I, think, um, I think some of us just do this naturally. Like some of us are just naturally hospitable. We naturally are looking to care for other people. We're looking to serve other people. Uh, and then others of us are, are uh, naturally are good at receiving it. Uh, like we just, and, and not, in a, not in a negative way, just like you're just good at receiving it. Like it's not a bad thing. Like it's actually, like if, if someone is hospitable to you, like they love serving you because you just, like you're thankful and you do all these different things well. And in this community, what I hope happens is that we practice and receive hospitality. Because some of us, some of us, like need to grow in this like we need to grow in practicing hospitality we need to grow in inviting our neighbors who we still haven't met yet even though we've lived there here for two years and invite them to our house for dinner just because like well i'm not a good cook who cares like google crock pot uh chili recipes or ask ryan burrow what his chili recipe is he'll tell you he makes chili more than people eat sandwiches in america all right i'm not kidding he's not here today so he can't defend himself but he does i promise his wife knows um but that's not, that's not a good enough reason not to practice hospitality. Or if you can't cook, go invite someone to dinner at your favorite Chipotle or whatever you like to eat. Um, or if you don't like to eat food, which is weird, uh, you can go take them to a cup of coffee, get a tea with them, or do whatever, go for a walk. But invite someone into your life and be kind to them. Uh, others of us aren't good at receiving it, meaning like we have to be the ones to show it. And if you know who you are, you know who you are. Like we like and sometimes someone's going to invite you into their lives and um, and I want to encourage you to receive it, like to accept that invitation and go, and, and go for it. Uh, I think I think the reason why a lot of us don't try new things. I had a, I had a roommate in college and he would never try anything new. And I, I always used to wonder why. And as I pondered it with him, it's because I don't think I think he thought if he messed up or it wasn't perfect because he was a perfectionist. And he's a super smart dude too. Uh, if it wasn't perfect, or he did, might have looked like silly, or like wouldn't know the answer, like he felt like he wouldn't be received or loved. And I think this is what happens with us with hospitality. Like I'm gonna say, hey, invite people into your lives, invite people to your houses for dinner, invite people to coffee, invite people to lunch, serve them. And what happens is, is that, that if you get rejected, like that's soul crushing. And then that tells me, you know what? I'm not gonna practice hospitality because when I do, I get rejected. And so, here's my invitation. One, this is, this is a community that needs to practice this. We need to be inviting people into our lives and serving them and modeling for this so that when we can do it in this community, it's safe. And then when we do it with our neighbors or with people that maybe be far from God and, uh, and other places, we have practice and we're used to doing this. And we might get rejected sometimes as well. But like this should be the place where you can ask someone or you can try to serve someone and you should be received. You should experience love and grace. And so if someone invites you to coffee after this, this, uh, this message today, don't tell them no. You might say, let me check my calendar. Okay, that's a great, that's a great tactic. And then actually give them time, receive the hospitality that they're trying to practice with you as well. But, but if we're going to do this, like if we're really going to do this, uh, some people actually say that, that hospitality is the thing that will change the world. They, they say it. They say that Jesus's method was going from, basically his ministry was going from one table to another, showing hospitality, love, and grace. And when people encountered that, um, they were changed, or they wanted to know more about it. We'll talk more about that with 
proclaim Jesus as well. So first one is be hospitable. That's our first vision, uh, value. Second one is to dialogue well. On our website, it says this. It says, we live in a world that is struggling to communicate effectively, and by striving to create avenues for dialogue centered on the gospel, we hope to help those who are far away draw near. We believe that communicating well also means listening well, and to practice these things is to participate in the way of Jesus. See, we have cool language on our website. Uh, I didn't write this. One of my buddies wrote that for us. So James 1.19 says this. Know this, my beloved brothers. You can have sisters there. And it says, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Uh, when you were a kid, did you ever have someone, or were you the kid that when you got upset at someone, you would take your ball and run home? Like, did that make sense, that illustration? Mm -hmm. I used to play baseball in my cul-de-sac growing up, and usually we'd start arguing ball and strikes about inning number three which is silly that, you know, you're third grade arguing balls and strikes at a wiffle ball game. Some of you might be like, that seems completely reasonable. <laughs> uh, and then whoever the guy was that had the ball would be like, well, I'm just going home. And he would like take his ball or his bat and then would be like, well, what are we gonna do now? Uh, this is what our society has come to. We are a take our ball and, and run home type of society where if someone says something that offends me or disagrees with me, then it's almost getting to the point where I not only take my ball and run home, and I'll see you tomorrow, we'll work this out again tomorrow, it's I'm gonna take my ball and run home, and I'm going to maybe exclude you from my life, and I, I might not even allow you to be in my life anymore because I disagree with you so greatly in this. And so we've lost the ability to actually have dialogue, to, to listen to people, to, to hear like to, to hear their heart, and to acknowledge that it's possible to disagree and to still love one another and to still care one another and to even walk away disagreeing but still being able to sit at a table together or to be able to come back together at a different time. And so we hope that we can practice this. That this community, that we're gonna talk, there's gonna be times, I mean, uh, that, that it could be political, it could be social, it could be theological, where we disagree, that I say something that is offensive and that you need to have a conversation with me. And our hope is this, is that if, if someone in this community says something to you that offends you, uh, or in your life that offends you, that you wouldn't just take your ball and run home and says no more game, is that you'd set up a time instead of have a conversation to understand, to, to, to do what the verse says, right? To be quick to listen is what is translated differently, slow to speak and slow to anger. We, we want to do that. We want to, to learn how to do that. We want to seek to understand them. We want to think about what we are, are saying and I struggle with this sometimes. Like sometimes I just talk to talk because I'm nervous or I, the silence bothers me. But no, like to think and consider a compassionate response. And then to be slow to anger, to not let something, a disagreement bother us so much that it causes us to leave. And if slow to anger is in the characteristic of who God is in Exodus. And we want you to be this way. We want our, our community uh, to be this way. And uh, this, is, this is more of a, maybe a, a response to Christian culture, but I think sometimes we're shocked that, uh, like, we have a word for this in our culture. It's called cancel culture, right? You probably have heard this. We're shocked. We're, I think we're shocked that this is in our society, but what I actually, as I, as I really have thought about this, I do think Christians for a long time canceled other groups. I really think this, and I might be wrong, and that's okay. Again, talk to me about that. But I think we've actually practiced like, oh, no, you're doing this, you're, you can't be in the church. Oh, you're doing this, you can't be here. Oh, no, you're doing this, you can't be there. And I think we've practiced this so long that the rest of the culture is like, okay, you're excluding me. And we've really worked, I think the, the church has really worked on trying to be less that way, but more welcoming, loving, gracious, still believing some foundational things that are, we believe are true in the scriptures, but still at least being able to like have a conversation. And I think society has been like, no, you've excluded me long enough, now it's my turn to exclude you. And so instead of uh, saying, all right, you have your wall, if I have my wall, let's just build a taller wall and like go in peace. It's like, no, like let's actually, uh, maybe the church instead can take up the mantle of dialoguing well and being quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger. All right, so be hospitable, dialogue well. Uh, and, and, and here's the thing, if, if you don't do this, it's very simple, what do you, what's your homework? Start doing it. All right. <laughs> I told you, I'm from Georgia. It's very simple in my mind. Uh, third one is this, proclaim Jesus. All right, so at the center, this, there's a reason why it's at the center. It's proclaim Jesus, right? This is 
the Great Commission. This is the evangelized kind of thing, but it's this. We believe the Bible tells one holistic and unified story pointing to Jesus as King and Savior. And as a community of believers, we want to be known for telling the same story in everything that we do. So Romans 10, 14 through 17 says this. How then will they call on him, this is Jesus, in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, uh, who has believed? What he has heard from us. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. This is all about the fact, this is like, this is, if you're a missionary, this is your missional passage. This is why I'm going to the ends of the earth, because how will they not hear unless I go and tell them, or unless God calls me to go and tell them? And we want people to really know the good news of Jesus. And we really believe that it's not just mine and Jake's and Evan's and whoever and Melissa's and, and Katie's job to, to, to do that. Like the people that are some of the leaders in, at Mission City. We believe that it is our job as the community of God to make his name famous, to make him known. And by doing that, we have to proclaim his name to the world, to your friends, to your neighbors, to your family. And we have to know the good news ourselves. And we have to begin to speak it and to, to model it with our own lives. And frankly, we're going to have to find new ways and maybe lean into some old ways. And if we don't do this, if we don't do this, I was reading a stat as well. I think Christians are still the majority um, uh, religion in the United States. And I was reading, I saw a news article, I don't remember what it was, but it was talking about how if things stayed the same, like the same dropout rate, I think by, and I might be getting this wrong too, but like by 2070, we'll be the minority in the U.S. And the nuns, which is the people that are not affiliated or atheist or, or agnostic, will then begin to take over and their rise will begin to, to do that. And I think it's, there's, we could, we, we could spend a, the rest of the day talking about this and dialoguing through this. But I do think uh, our methodology uh, needs to be under some consideration as we consider the way forward and how we proclaim Jesus. And I think some of us, um, and, and because of how the church has responded throughout the years, at least of my lifetime, I'm 35, um, I, I think we need to get creative in how we consider how to do this. And I think some of the best minds are still thinking that the best way forward in this is inviting people to your homes to sit at your tables, to show them hospitality, to dialogue well, and then in doing so, sharing the good news of Jesus. And that, that's, that's, where, that's where life change is happening. And that's where life change is happening in a space that is different, um, that, that, that is different than just a dude sitting in a street corner holding a sign, that is different than you know, uh, engaging in a random conversation that, uh, that, is, that, that has no, relation, no relational equity into it. And so, but the other thing too is, it's not just the methodology that has to change. The church actually has to start doing it. Like, you have to start doing it. And if you don't proclaim Jesus, then if, if, if I don't proclaim Jesus, if I don't begin to share this good news, because it is, like, we believe it's good news. If, unless you don't, then that's okay. That's a, then we can have a different conversation. But if you do, then we have, to, we have to start participating in it, or we shouldn't be surprised in the decline that exists in the U.S. and the church, and potentially in the other West, Western uh, more Western civilizations. All right, so be hospitable, dialogue well, proclaim Jesus. Fourth one is live whole. This is a fun one, happy one. That was a, it was a more of a challenge. The good news will impact every part of our existence, the way we work, play, raise our families, and live. We believe following Jesus is the best life possible, and we want to invite those far from God to the wholeness, joy, and peace of King Jesus. Therefore, First Peter says, therefore, preparing your minds for action. And being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not conform to the passions of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you, this is the line, are to be holy in all your con conduct. If you can imagine a pie chart of your life and how you spend your time, about what percentage would you put in the work category of the pie chart? Do you guys know what a pie chart is? Cool, me too. <laughs> Just shout it out. What, what about what percentage of your life is, I mean, come on, eight, eight hours, a third, right? 
A third of your life is at work. A third of it is what? Sleep? Is that fair? All right, so you got about 33% for family, friends, fun, and Jesus. Right? Ish. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of how I think about it less. And if you could imagine that one third, what percentage do you kind of, where, where do those things fall? You know? They're all different for us, right? Some of us are different stages of life, a lot more friends, stuff like that too. I think this is the way that we, we've thought about church uh, as we think about it. It's like church is a time where I go on Sunday and I connect and then I serve and I connect and then I have a group and I connect and that's the percentage of time that I give to it. Live whole is this idea that, that following Jesus in, in places every aspect of your life. And so it would almost like remove Jesus as an option on the pie chart and it would be like adding a filter to your pie chart that is about following Jesus. Uh, you, you, a filter, what, what's the point of a filter on a photo? Right, you, you guys know what filters are on our photos? You're not supposed to use them if you're really good, you should be able to uh, adjust your photos automatically, but I'm not a talented photographer, so I use, uh, I like to use filters on my Instagram posts, the one I do a year. Um, <laughs> it's true. I thought I was going to get more laughs at that. That's okay. Uh, uh, but my wife tells me that, uh, oh, don't do a filter. You should just do your, like, let me, just let me see it. Just adjust all the settings on your own, right? But a filter kind of, like, overlays and changes the photo, like, completely, right, to whatever the settings are of that filter. And I think this is how we need to think about our lives, is, like, that you have your entire life, you have your entire pie chart, and that Jesus, or following Jesus, is a filter that infuses its way into every aspect of it. It infuses its way into every aspect of it. As opposed to saying, I have 6% of my life is devoted to the church and following Jesus because I have my quiet time, I have my church time, I have my community group, and I serve a little bit. As opposed to, no, 100% of my life is filtered uh, by, by following Jesus. The way I work, the way I play, the way I have fun, the way I, eat, the way I sleep. My bedtime routine is infused by following Jesus. Like, all of it is matter. There's a filter through following Jesus. That's what live whole is all about. And if you're, if you're, if you're compartmentalizing your life and saying, no, I have this, 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 and this, then maybe what we need to do is, is, is think about adding this filter to our lives as well. Last one, I gotta go. Evan, you guys can come on up. Uh, is multiply disciples. We believe in advancing the kingdom of God by making disciples in our city, the next generation, and planting churches domestically and internationally. And this is the great commission. It says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to them. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So personally, again, we already know this, right? We want you to know and follow Jesus. That's what, that's what a disciple is, practicing the way of Jesus. We already talked about that. We have an avenue here called Discipleship Groups, which is a way for you to do that in a more in-depth way, where someone invites you to follow them as they follow Jesus, and then eventually you will take on your own group. It's an intentional multiplication model. The other thing that is mentioned in that is this, is that we have a desire for the global side, which Nate and, and Rox and his team are trying to plant churches in the Amazon. The people in Paris are trying to plant churches globally. Uh, and so we have a desire, maybe not to personally go plant them, although if the Lord is calling you, we'll help you figure that out. Um, but we want to be a part of, of the, 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 the churches being planted across the world. And not only that, we want to be a part of churches being planted domestically. I know we're a small congregation, but if the Lord would have us to multiply and to plant more churches, or, or, or to at least fund more church plants, then we want to be a part of that as well. And so maybe by raising up people in the church, we, we can inspire them, train them to go out, uh, or we can cheerlead for those uh, that we can help along the way. And so those are, that's who we are. We're a community that makes Jesus, know, Jesus known, and we want to be hospitable. We want to, uh, there we go, dialogue well, <laughs> proclaim Jesus, live whole, and multiply disciples. That's who we are. And we want to invite you to be a part of that with us. And we want to invite you to be a part of, and to, to live that way. If you're going to be a part of Mission City, like we hope that you do practice hospitality in your life, that you do dialogue well, that you proclaim Jesus, that you learn about adding the filter of Jesus to every avenue of your life, and that you're about intentional multiplication, more people following Jesus. And that's what we want to invite you into as well.
And so let me pray for us. And, and I will say this is, is in response, if you need to have a response for this message, is consider any of those things that we've talked about today. And what is God putting on your heart where you say, this is lacking in my life. And this is where our God, the Holy Spirit today is, is asking you to grow. And what are those areas? And which area is God encouraging you to grow? And maybe it's all of them, but let's be honest, it's hard to do, have five goals and to do all of them unless you're just awesome. Um, but maybe one or two that God is stirring, the Spirit's stirring right now, saying, hey, I want, you to I want you to practice more hospitality. You know, you don't really dialogue well. You don't really share Jesus. Like, you love me, but you're not sharing me anywhere. The filter of your life, your pie chart is very subdivided and connected, and I want to be a part of all of it. Or maybe it's this, is that you have been, you, you have, yet to make disciples is Jesus' final command to, to his church. Lord Jesus, we invite you today just to move and to minister to us and speak to us, God, about which of these that you would have us grow in. And God, if people are thinking about being a part of the Fishing City, God, that they, they would know who we are and that what was said today would be true of us. That where we are lacking, not as individuals, but as a community, that you would make it known to us and that we would work to grow in those areas that you've called us to be as an organization and as a church. So we love you so much. We praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, amen. Well, as you respond today, we respond in a few ways. We're going to respond through a few songs. Uh, we also have a couple people on each side down the stairs that would love to pray with you. If you maybe want to pray through some of these things that maybe got a stirring in you, one of these things to respond to, or maybe, you, maybe like you don't even know how to ask that question. Like, where, where do, how do I grow? Like, come down, or like, or which, which of these should I, when I grow, and how do I determine which one, what direction to go in? These people that are, are down here, I think it's Luke and Meg today. They would love to pray with you. They would love to, to, to even give you some wisdom on, on, on what to do. Also, we, we, uh, we have communion that is down front as well. On each side, you can come down and, and take communion whenever you are ready. Is, is a time for us to celebrate our Savior whose body broken and bloodshed. The one that we are proclaiming, the one that laid down his life so that we could be forgiven and rose again so that we could have new life. We're celebrating his death today by the, the breaking of the bread and, and the drinking of his juice. So Lord, would you move today in this time of response? We love you so much. Praise in Jesus' name.
Lord Jesus, we love you so much, and uh, we pray that you would move this week. God, that we would be a community that makes Jesus know that you know him. And thank you so much for laying down your life for us so that we can have new life in you. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, before you go, I, do, I do just want to publicly just, Katie, thank you so much for all the work that you do with our kids and for your passion for our kids. Can we just thank her with maybe applause? Yeah. And, uh, and you and your team do an incredible job. So thank you so much. Uh, we are blessed to have you in that role for sure. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us. If you do, if you're interested in serving in kids, Katie will be outside in the lobby. We'd love to chat with you. Uh, also, um, if you have questions about uh, us moving, November 6th is the first Sunday in the new place. I'll be out in the lobby. We'd love to chat with you. Have a fantastic week, and we'll see you next time.